Android 6.0 Marshmallow brought a major change to Android's permission model. Instead of asking for all permissions at install time, it introduced a runtime permission model, letting you control when your app asks for a permission. When and how you ask for a permission is critical. It's kind of like asking someone out on a date. Doing it too soon, too often, or in the wrong way isn't going to go well for you. I'm Nick Butcher, and in this video, I'll walk you through the details of Android's runtime permission model and show you how to design a UX for asking for permission that's appropriate to your app's needs. Now, the purpose of permissions is to protect your user's privacy. When you ask for a permission, you're asking them to give up a little bit of that privacy. And as such, you need to offer a clear and equal benefit in exchange for that access. Runtime permissions allow you to choose the right time to ask for a permission when the user has more context about why you're requesting it and the benefits of granting. You might be familiar with runtime permissions from other platforms such as the web. But the way that Android implements them makes it incredibly important to ask for them in just the right way. You see, Android's permission model favors protecting the user. So when your app requests a permission, Android shows a dialog letting the user accept or deny it, but it also lets them say, never let this app ask me for this permission again. Now, you'll want to avoid this outcome. So we've designed the system to effectively let you ask for permissions without having to be overly defensive. The very first time you request a permission, we don't show that dreaded never ask again checkbox. We'll only show it after a user's denied a permission request at least once. You can check if you've been denied before and be smart about when to provide more education. This lets you build a smooth journey through your app, only adding extra steps or information when needed. In particular, you don't need to be too defensive, like always screening for interest before actually requesting a permission, essentially asking twice. This double prompting can be unnecessary and annoying, and you can achieve the same effect by asking at the right time and in the right way. We break down the different approaches to asking for permissions across two dimensions. Firstly, how important is the permission to your app's operation? And secondly, how clear is it why you're asking for it? Depending on these two factors, we recommend different approaches to how you ask for permission. If the need for a permission is both critical to your app and obvious why it's needed, then we recommend asking up front. For example, if you're making an SMS app, then the SMS permission is absolutely critical for you to function, and it's crystal clear why you're asking for it. Don't bother your users with any unnecessary explanations. Just request a permission straight away. If a permission is really important to your app, but not immediately obvious why, then we recommend educating before asking. If your app uses some kind of user onboarding, then this would be a great opportunity to tell them about this killer feature, then go ahead and ask for the permission. So for example, if a key part of your note-taking app is that it logs the location where you made a note, you'd want to educate your users about that upfront and then ask for the permission. Next up, if a secondary feature of your app needs a permission, but it's clear why, then ask in context. For example, if your note-taking app lets you dictate an audio note, then it's pretty clear why this feature would need the record audio permission. There's no need to bombard your user too early with this request. Better to wait until they try to use the feature when it will be immediately obvious why you're prompting for it. Finally, if a feature is not core to your app's purpose and not immediately obvious why it's requested, then you should educate in context. So for example, if your note-taking app lets you collaborate with friends, then requesting access to your contacts might be reasonable, but it isn't immediately obvious and would benefit from some user education. When the user invokes a feature, offer some explanation of the benefits it allows, like auto-completing email addresses, and then let the user opt into it, only then asking for permission. By using the right approach, it should be clear to the user why you're requesting a permission and what they get for it in return. This doesn't, however, mean that they'll grant the permission 100% of the time. So how should you handle denial? Now, remember that Android lets you know if the user has previously denied a permission so that you can show more rationale to educate them on why you're asking and the benefits of granting. If a user denies a critical permission, then explain why you can't proceed without it and link to your app's settings page where they can rectify it. Don't just shut down. 
Now this is especially important as the user may have checked that never ask again box. So your app may receive the permission denial without the user seeing the permission dialog and it could seem like the interaction was just ignored. Another pro tip is to always show the user immediate benefit when they grant you a permission. Like we said, this is a trade-off of access for functionality. So for example, if you're granted access to the user's contacts, then you could immediately present the list of their favorite contacts for quick selection. Finally, while you're taking stock of the permissions your app uses, perhaps revisit if you need a permission at all. Android offers facilities for apps to talk to each other, letting you delegate tasks to other apps. For example, if you want to allow users to take a photo, but it isn't a core part of your app, consider using Intense to ask the camera app to take the photo and share it back to you. Voila, no need for the camera permission. So that's Android's runtime permissions model in a nutshell, and some approaches to asking for permissions. Now that you understand how it works, you can craft the perfect flow for whether, when, and how to ask for permissions, maximizing your chance of your users agreeing to hook up with your app. Thanks for watching. For more information, check out these links.